Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and long time no see. Um, I apologize because the introduction part of this video will be a little bit blurry and that's because I am filming on my phone camera and it's horrible. It's like one of the worst cameras I've ever had. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I decided that since I have been wanting to kind of get back into filming, but I've been struggling to figure out what to film and I also haven't been reading very much that I would try to get back with a vlog video again. Um, I kind of picked a random time to do this because today is July 26th so the month is almost over and it's Friday so the week is almost over so I thought what I would do is to do this vlog from now through the end of the month um, so probably till maybe next Friday. So really quickly, I'm just going to let you know what I am reading. Um, I think as I've mentioned before, I haven't really been reading that much this year. It's been a very strange year. Um, but what I am currently reading is the book Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee. Now I'm actually only 25 pages into this and it's not that it's bad or that I dislike it or that I'm not interested in reading this, but I don't know if I'm going to continue this right now. Um, I started reading this on a recommendation from a booktuber from I think like a year ago or something like that and it seemed really interesting. It's just not capturing my attention at the moment. But a book that has captured my attention is Fake News by Derek J. Taylor. Um, this is a book that I purchased a, a year ago as well and I still haven't read it until now. Um, but this is very interesting. At the moment, it's been talking about the history of the printing press and how that has changed the people's relationship with those in power. And it's using the American Revolution um, as the prime example as of now, but it goes through, you know, different events in American history. Um, and I'm really enjoying this because the author uses very plain, straightforward, simplistic language and it's really nice to be able to digest nonfiction at a time when I am having troubles focusing. Um, but because of the language that he uses, I'm able to do that. It's not, you know, laborious to read. I don't feel like I'm doing work trying to read it. So that's really um, kind of been a nice thing. I'm interested to see. I think I'm almost done with the, like, American Revolution and that part and I'm going into 19th century radicals in guerrilla journalism so that sounds pretty cool um, so yeah I'm reading this and I'm liking it I'm also still reading um, animal liberation and that's taking me a long time to read because I knew that that book was going to be tough I knew that the content in it was difficult the descriptions of different animal experiments animal testing um, in animal practices, I knew that that was hard, but sometimes I overestimate, no, sometimes I underestimate how I will internally react to things. I think, oh, I've seen everything. I, nothing will bother me. I can get through it. It won't affect me. And then I'm reading it and I am somehow surprised that I'm very strongly affected. The descriptions of the animal tests in particular, um, it's very tough um, and so I just haven't been able to get myself to keep exposing myself to that so yeah I will continue to update you for um, throughout the next week let you know my thoughts on any of the books that I'm reading and yes I look forward to seeing you soon hey everybody it is me again it is still uh, July 26th and I'm just updating you because I am getting ready to um, head to the bookstore. I actually just got out of work um, and I have a gift card to Books A Million so I thought that is the perfect excuse to go and visit the bookstore because I've been actively trying to stay away from it. Um, but you know I have a gift card so what else can I do? It's literally not even my choice at this point. But yeah, I'll keep you updated, um, you know, if I get any books and do like a little mini haul here to include in the vlog. Um, yeah got back from the bookstore and I typically don't like to go to large chain bookstores like Barnes & Noble or Books A Million um, because I don't buy new books hardly ever unless I have a planned 
read along or something like that. But the Books A Million by my house has used books for sale and it's one of the only places in my location that I can buy used books and I had a gift card there. So um, yeah, I went there and I ended up getting two books that I'm pretty excited about. The first one is this one here. And it is Humanitarian Imperialism, Using Human Rights to Sell War by John, um, it's covered up with a sticker, Brickmont. And um, I got this book because the back intrigued me. It says, in this stimulating book, Jean or John Brickmont effectively deconstructs humanitarian interventionism and makes a good call words are hard, makes a good case that leftists who support it are the useful idiots of imperialism. He also provides a broader critique of the Western left and offers a number of constructive suggestions. This insightful book is chock full of enlightening case studies and provocative arguments. I decided to pick this book up because I am an intellectual masochist and I love to... Um, read and hear about people who think um, different than I do and especially opposite of me and I consider myself extremely left and very progressive um, and I'm interested in humanitarianism um, and human rights and so I thought it would be very interesting to read about this from um, you know an opposite viewpoint um, I really have noticed lately, I think because I've just had a lot going on in my personal life and then also just because the political scene right now is so tense and chaotic and everything seems so serious that I have exposed myself less and less and opened myself up less and less to opposing viewpoints and while I'm not saying that I think my viewpoints are wrong, obviously I don't think that, but nobody does. So I think it's really important to constantly expose yourself to different perspectives because one of two things can happen in, in my opinion. Either I read this and I disagree with everything this person says and I do my due diligence and all my research so I can prove them wrong effectively or I hear something that I agree with or disagree with and I do my research and I find out mm, maybe I was missing information or maybe my perspective um, doesn't include some things that I should consider. Um, so either way I learn something new um, and I can really add to my existing ideas and body of knowledge. So yeah anyways I'm just kind of excited to see what this is. I have no idea. Um, I haven't heard anything about this but I did quickly look it up on Goodreads and I think people said that it was pretty well researched so that makes me happy. Um, and then the second book I got is a brick, and that is, oh my gosh, this bad boy. And I don't know if you can see from there, but it is thick. It is um, The Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. And of course, if you're on booktube, you have heard about this, um, and so have I, for the same way that you have. Um, and a lot of people really like it, and pretty diverse readers have liked this. So I wanted to pick it up. I really only wanted the first book, but at my book, Simillion, <clears throat> they only had new copies of the first book, and that was more expensive than the trilogy used, which was only $7. So, and it's in really great condition. So I decided to pick this whole thing up. If I want to, I can just read the first book, and if I don't like it, then I don't have to keep reading it. So... Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I don't know when I'm going to actually get into this because it is 1,100 pages and that terrifies me. Hey, um, today is Saturday, July 27th, and <clears throat> I'm feeling a little bit tired today, like not normal tired, like I think I might be coming down with something kind of tired. So I guess that's beneficial for my reading because um, I have been getting more into disgrace and at this point I'm about um, on page 117. But there are a couple things that I kind of just want to touch on. I haven't read any other people's discussions on this book or on this story, but I find myself a little bit frustrated with a number of things. And the first is that 
let's just acknowledge the fact that David Lurie, who's the main um, person in the book, is a total asshole. <laughs> um, he has some pretty um, disgusting um, and unhealthy views on women, um, women's purpose, on sex, sexuality, um, and relationships between men and women of all different kinds. Um, and that's evident throughout a number of things that he says and his, you know, description of his thoughts on things throughout the book. One thing I started to notice now that he's moved in with his daughter um, is that he has some very weird things to say about his daughter or he, he makes some very weird observations about his daughter. And I am not a father uh, um, and... You know, I didn't really have a relationship with my father growing up, so maybe some of these things are normal. I don't know. But to me, um, a number of the observations that he's making are very weird. But then also I want to talk about kind of the interesting juxtaposition between situations in this book. So in the beginning of the book, you see him as he's a professor exploiting this young woman, um, and then... Um, getting involved with her sexually. In my understanding, in my interpretation of the book, although the young woman that he's sexually engaged with does not verbally say no and she physically lets him do these things to her, um, he, the narrator talks about how she is aversive and how she avoids him and how he keeps imposing himself upon her. And so to me, that is nonverbal um lack of consent and in fact nonverbal way of telling you that hey I'm not interested. I don't know why the young woman um you know wasn't more vocal or why the young woman allowed him to do these things to her, but I don't know the situation, you know, and, and that, again, that's an interesting conversation because although yes, women can say no, um sometimes they don't feel like they can. Um, or, you know, maybe their life experiences, unfortunately, have taught them that verbalizing no doesn't mean anything. So, I don't know, maybe I'm reading too far into this, but to me it has a lot of talk about consent. Alright, so I have to make a quick stop to the thrift store to drop off some stuff that I'm getting rid of. Um, as I'm getting ready to move, I'm going through my house and anything I don't use on like a daily or weekly basis or that I will need in the future, I'm kind of just getting rid of because I don't want to have to pay and move a bunch of stuff that I don't need. So anyways, I happen to check... Um, um, free little library or littlefreelibrary.com the locations of the nearest ones and as it turns out there is a free little library right on my way to the thrift store where I'm gonna drop off my stuff so I thought that um, because I have some books that I have been wanting to unhaul I would quickly go and do that so the books that I'm gonna donate to this one um, are fruits basket I tried so hard to read that um, and I think part of it is that I'm not used to the style and it just I wasn't interested in it so I'm gonna get rid of that one I'm also gonna donate goodbye Paris a novel I honestly have no idea what this is about I got it one month when um, I was subscribing to book of the month club um, I've since stopped and the second one actually is also a book of the month club which is um, spinning silver by Naomi Novik I got this because a lot of people seemed interested in it but then after they read it said it wasn't that good so I just never have been inclined to pick it up and it, they're brand new so I'm gonna go ahead and donate those and I will include that in my vlog. I'm currently here at the Free Little Library and it's pretty full actually um, and somebody just came in behind me which makes this kind of awkward so I'm gonna donate my books here and I'm also gonna quickly revert the camera so you can see what is currently in there. Alright, so as it turns out, I am not the best person at filming, um, while I'm moving anyways. Um, so I wasn't really able to show you the procedure as I kind of wanted to. Um, I know I've seen Books and Jams do these in her vlog, and I always think it's kind of fun. Um, 
but maybe I'll get better at it. I'm kind of hoping this weekend to go, um, we live by an island close by, so I want to go on the island because I know that there's a bunch there, um, and I want to donate some there too, so I'm hoping to bring you along with me. I don't know, it, it's just kind of a fun thing. I like seeing what's in there. I didn't actually take anything out of the box because there was nothing that I was really wanting to read, and I've kind of set a rule for myself because, you know, I'm very fortunate, like, I'm able to get access to books one way or another if I want them, whether I purchase them or get them from the library. So I really want to reserve like how much I take from those kinds of boxes because there are a lot of people who maybe they aren't able to get to the library and they're not able to purchase books. So I just kind of want to drop off what I can. Hello everybody. Um, I just wanted to do a quick update because I finally finished reading Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee. And this was a book that I sort of groaned and grunted inside my way through because there are so many parts that are absolutely frustrating, so much thematic content that is frustrating. Um, I do have to say that I don't think I am familiar with enough of South African history to really pick up on some of the more subtle things I think the author probably wrote into this book. Um, so a lot of the comments about South African culture, past, present, future, um, and apartheid, I think went over my head. And that's kind of a shame. It's kind of a disgrace. Um, because I think that that is a big, one of the main, if not the main components, um, of what this book is really supposed to be about. The parts that I kind of understood more were the parts having to do with the main character David's hierarchical view of the world. Professor David Lurie is an asshole. Like, there's no getting around it. He has the most twisted views of the world. He has a weird relationship with sex, a weird relationship with women, even a weird relationship with animals, with people of color, with even inanimate um, ideas like beauty and art. Um, everything about him is just very self-aggrandizing and pretentious, and I couldn't stand him. Um, but I do think that his perspective was interesting because I do think that his perspective is one that, unfortunately, many people share. Um, and so I, I do eventually want to get into more detail about this book, but at the moment I'm still kind of mulling things over in my mind. So um, I might do a separate wrap-up for this book or a review for this book, but I'm not sure because um, honestly I've looked at a couple other YouTubers' reviews since I finished it and they did a way better job than I could ever do. In fact, I'll link the ones that I viewed down in the description box below because I think that they're very beneficial and important conversations. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what I'm going to read next. I should finish up um, Fake News and Animal Liberation, but I'm in the mood for fiction, so I'm not quite sure what I will do. So I will get back to you when I do. Alright, so I wanted to give you all a quick update because I did start reading a new book. I think I started it yesterday, and that is Metropole, written by Frank Carinthi, translated by... George Sizertes. I'm slaughtering his name, I'm sure. But Metropole is a Hungarian classic, and it follows this man who is a linguistics professor. And he travels to Helsinki for a conference. <clears throat> But while he's on the plane, he falls asleep, and when he wakes up, he's quickly rushed off the plane into the airport. And it's not until he starts to look for his luggage and that kind of thing that he realizes that on all of the signs, he can't identify the written language. And he also cannot understand the spoken language. He realizes very soon that he doesn't know where he's at at all, and in fact, he doesn't really know how anything works in this mysterious place. So he somehow finds himself um, able to check into a hotel, which is still kind of confusing. 
I mean, I read it myself, but I'm still kind of confused about how the whole ordeal happened, which I think is kind of the point because it's supposed to be this kind of like stuffy, confusing atmosphere. Um, but this place is a metropolitan city and everything he has to wait in line for. He doesn't understand the currency. He doesn't understand anything. And so he's trying to figure out how he's going to get home. Now keep in mind he is a linguistics professor, but he doesn't recognize the base or the root of any of these languages either. So he's trying to piece together whatever he can figure out. Um, all of this has happened and we're only 35 pages in and it's a 200 something page book. So I'll be interested to see how <clears throat> the story goes on from here. Um, but yeah, I, I think I heard about this book because um, I was reading a cognitive psychology textbook and this story was referenced and I remember thinking that it sounded very interesting so I picked it up. Um, but yeah, I will keep you posted on what I think about it as I go along. Alright, so it is evening of Thursday, August 1st, and I wanted to check in with everybody because I received a package that I'm getting ready to open. Sorry, it's so grainy and dark. Um, I really am going to start using my other camera because the quality of this is horrible, but hopefully I can make something out of all of these videos I have been filming. But I wanted to show my opening of a book that I bought. And they delivered it, and where they delivered it was, let's see how I can put this somewhere. I'm going to put you here. So, they delivered it in the middle of the rain, and I have a little part in front of my door where it's covered. So, if you, de if you deliver something and you put it there, it's not going to get wet. But they put it on the grass right next to that, so the book has been sitting in the rain all day. But Amazon's packaging is effective because my copy of To Kill a Mockingbird is in perfect condition and dry. So thank goodness for that. While I have you here, I'm also going to open this up because I got um, something from Shutterfly because I purchased a personalized children's book for a friend, which I'm so excited about. It's going to be so freaking cute. But anyways, so um, instead of... I could either pay for shipping or for like a dollar more, I could get a personalized something for myself. So I got a personalized mug and, oh, it's so cute. How adorable. Okay, so it's here. I don't know if you can see it. Again, the quality is bad, but it's just pictures of me and my partner, my lovely boyfriend. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm going to love drinking from this. So yeah, I just wanted to keep you updated on, you know, what I'm doing, and that's about it. Alright, so I'm actually back, but it's still Thursday, August 1st, and I'm actually going to get ready to wrap this vlog up because I think I'm going to try to continue vlogging for a little bit because I have a lot of changes and something kind of interesting to vlog, whereas usually I don't. Um... I do have to say that vlogging feels to me a little bit narcissistic and what troubles me is that even though I acknowledge that it is a bit narcissistic, I'm still here doing it. So I don't know what that says about me, um, hopefully not too much, but I do want to quickly show you because I was getting ready to um, pack away some of my books because I am getting ready to move. Um, so. I just kind of took a survey of my bookshelf and it is a hot mess. I just wanted to show you. And I feel like that's the struggle that probably many booktubers have, right? Like what our shelves are supposed to look like before we film or while we're filming versus what they actually look like on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to pack some books away, and then like I said, I think I'm going to continue vlogging, but I'll do it with my um, actual video camera, that way it's a better quality. Um, but I will see you all in the next video.